globe stories again. Yes, I know it's been a while. Um, yeah, what can I say? I decided to change that and to give you an update on what has been up with my dear friend, the German flat earther Joe Craxney, because he has also been a little dormant, just like I have been. But a couple months ago, he started uploading videos again. And of course, who would have thought he never bothered to uh, even address the stuff that uh, I've been talking to him about, either via video or in the comment section about perspective flaws and that kind of nasty stuff that doesn't really bother flat earthers much. So he just continues like any true flat earther. He just spews out the same old stuff. Uh, yeah, like he did the last couple of years. So he continues to visit lakes and enjoy the scenery put his camera on the tripod as low as possible and get confused by uh, yeah, atmospheric effects again. Um, so I've decided to not address um, that old, uh, yeah, th that same old stuff about black swans and whatnot for the gazillionth time. Instead, I want to take a little different approach. But uh, to that we will get in just a minute. Right about now I just want to focus on one little um, interesting thing that Joe yeah, kind of forgot to notice when he was shooting uh, with his P900 across the lake and zooming in on uh, atmospheric refraction. And that is this. As you can see, he took this image during sunrise and he even tells us this in the video. How nice of him. But do you notice the light rays that are crossing uh, the field of view there? How can it be that the light rays come across the lake in this fashion if the sun is always above our heads as uh, him and other flat earthers always claim it to be? Interesting. But as I said, this will not be uh, the main point of my video, although it's a quite a funny, uh, funny little bit that I didn't want to miss out. Instead, Joe decided to go into the field of astronomy and failing big time on that too. So that is kind of what I want to focus on in my video today, because astronomy has kind of turned into uh, this hobby of mine. And I also want to share with you a couple of um, older videos from uh, Wolfie6020 and a, another German YouTuber by the name of Sepp Sovas. Um, so I hope that you give those older videos a watch. So let's just dive right in. Joe Craxney writes here in his video is that the moon is his own light source and illuminates the light magically. Which is funny because we can see craters there or at least shadowy areas that are that are somewhat always in the same position although the moon moves and although the uh, the illumination of the moon changes. Um, yeah, interesting, just interesting little stuff that millions of people noticed for the last couple thousand years but this stupid fat other just doesn't. But of course, Flatty Joe doesn't stop there. He also talks about Venus and shows out of focus um, video of Venus from an airplane for some reason. And he also shows us the stars. And that is a time lapse uh, video of the stars from uh, the Northern Hemisphere, I presume. Um, and he kind of shows this to prove that the Earth is stationary. Not presuming anything, not presuming that the Earth, uh, the, not presuming anything about the shape of the Earth. What do we see in this image? Or what do we see when we follow the stars uh, during the night? We see that they are making a 
curved trail. They seem to move around a center of rotation as all stars are describing a circle around the night sky. So if we were to let this uh, time lapse go for a full night, we would see that every star is making a circle, a circular trail. So when we are doing actual astronomy, star trails are funny and nice to look at, but if we actually want to look at stars for longer times, even look at the sun and the moon, we have to track that movement of the stars. Again, we are not presuming anything. We're not assuming that the Earth is spherical or flat or rotating or whatever. We're just looking at what's there. And what's there is that there are telescopes and especially telescope mounts that compensate for the movement of those stars and the sun and the moon. We're not caring about where this movement is coming from. That's just a fact of life. When you want to do astronomy uh, for longer periods of time and you don't want to always track so the object that you want to look at, video you have to um, yeah, track uh, such that object. Yeah, I just said it. So you have to track it with an automatic so mount. This is an automated mount that is polar aligned to the North Celestial Pole and it's tracking the sun. So I'm going to link uh, all the videos that um, Wolfie6020 was uh, uh, uploaded uh, to his channel and he was in this video actually tracking the sun as you can see um, and what's interesting about this is that the telescope did a full 360 degree rotation around this axis this is going to be important in just a bit but to reiterate for just a second you can use such a mount for tracking any celestial object be it the sun the moon the stars or the planets even um, you can track any object and keep it as a point focused in your telescope and the mount is automatically tracking that object Again, we are not presuming anything. We're not presuming that the Earth is moving or a globe or flat or whatever. We're just observing. So we are right now observing that this telescope mount is tracking the movement of the Sun by rotating around just this one axis. Let me reiterate that. The telescope mount is tracking or is prescribing a circular motion by just rotating one axis. So now we can start thinking about how what this tells us about the shape of the Earth. Let's do a little um, thought experiment here. Let's presume that the Earth is flat and stationary and that the stars and the sun and the moon are moving above us. So let's imagine that we're sitting uh, on a chair looking at at uh, the ceiling and we have a fan on the ceiling and a light source a little LED light is mounted to the tip of fan blade and the fan is rotating if we were to try to keep that LED light in focus with a with our camera or whatever we were looking at with and we were using such a telescope mount as we have just seen we would have to have to move both axes to track that circular motion of that light source that we're looking at. So right now we're looking at a video from Sepp Sovas who um, yeah, did an amazing job in Blender and he um, did an animation of what uh, a telescope mount on a flat earth would have to have to do in order to keep the sun tracked and in focus both axes so the green one and the yellow one have to have to rotate it cannot work any other way 
if the Earth is flat and stationary and the Sun is actually moving around us. But of course, this is not what we see. This is not what uh, Wolfie 6020's telescope did. And of course, Wolfie 6020, being the professional that he is, um, he uploaded another video where he showed that he kept the sun in focus and in the center of his field of view of his telescope all the time. And of course, um, Seb Sovas did this in his animation as well. So he also modeled a globe, Earth, and he perfectly shows in his model what uh, Wolfie 6020 did in his experiment. He kept the sun in the field of view of his virtual telescope the whole time. And as you can see, the telescope was rotating um, perfectly with the Earth's motion. The telescope field of view was also looking uh, to the ground, just as we've seen in Wolfie 6020's video where the telescope was uh, looking downwards during the nighttime. So this just shows perfectly how the motion of the stars and the movement of the stars proves that the Earth has to be a rotating globe. It just cannot be any other way when you look at the stars and really understand how um, telescope mounts compensate for that movement that we see in the sky. So, uh, yeah, that was it. Uh, pretty quick video. Again, I highly recommend the uh, two videos that I just showed by Seb Sovas and Wolfie 6020. Again, links are in the description. Feel free to watch the full videos. And yes, I'll see you in the very next video. Take care and see ya.